Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on the channel and any watch you see on our website. Reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing a relatively late edition of the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Submariner 16610LV Lunette Vert. Launched in 2003, it was the 50th anniversary Submariner and it is lovingly nicknamed the Kermit for obvious reasons. This one has a serial number corresponding to 2009, so not just late production but a wonderful transitional piece representing the change from the way Rolex was to the way Rolex is today, all in one 40mm 904L highly anti-corrosive stainless steel case. Now the timepiece is 40 millimeters in diameter in terms of thickness. It's 12.8, which makes it thin as dive watches go. You can see it is 48 millimeters from lug to lug, 47.5 to be precise, and then from end link to end link, 50.5 millimeters across the wrist. So that's the absolute difference from one side to the other. You can also see that between the lugs, it has 20 millimeter spacing. So if you want to throw the watch on a strap, and these pretty super case watches look great on straps, 20 millimeters would be the size you buy. Let's take a quick look at the watch on the wrist. You can see it's comfortable, and it's also a different presence than the bigger, sheer, squared off super case. If you can wear one, you can wear the other, but many people are very uh, particular about which they prefer, and this is more of a traditional Rolex experience, both in the way it looks and the way it fits. Comfortable, low slung, it could absolutely be your dress watch that's been done many times with rotating bezel Rolex. And as you can see on my wrist, it's comfortable. 16 centimeters circumference wrist, but I think you could wear this on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. Now, of course, I mentioned that this watch features some transitional features that represent the move away from the way Rolex was. Every single Kermit ever made had solid lugs. The early press photos showed perforation but if you find a Kermit with perforated lugs, you're probably looking at a prototype or a Franken watch, and you're not going to find yourself a Rolex prototype. The lug profiles include uh, solid end links, which is the first break with the past in terms of the bracelet itself. You'll also note that it does have hollow center links, so we're halfway between the past and the present here. It still has the old style stamped oyster clasp, so you always want to make sure you get a good one that still features sharply defined embossed features, and then closes with a snick and a snap. This one still has both excellent definition and excellent tolerance. You can see internally, there are several different anchoring points for the bracelet. So with your strap tool, you can change the anchoring point and change the fit. Removable links are fixed by screws and you can pull it out and there is a flip lock dive extension built in should you wish to take this watch diving over a wet or dry suit. Screw down crown, it's a trip lock in steel. You know that because it features the three dots under the Rolex crown. Polished case blanks, but more tapered in profile than the squared off super case. You can see just how straight this watch is as the break between case flank and lug hood is sharp. You'll also note that the lugs are even and full, not just from side to side, but from end to end. This watch has been rarely, if ever, refinished. The bezel too, both insert and bezel base are in great shape. Let's hear the click up against my mic. Sharp. It moves freely. It's comfortable. There's no binding, and the 120 clicks are distinct. Line it up with the minute hand, and you have an impromptu 0 to 60 minute count up timer, which I love because it's hard to read a chronograph. If you need to time something, generally it's going to be less than an hour, and it will be easier to time on a bezel. Of course, you have that anodized green insert that makes this the Kermit, but a lot of folks don't realize that the dial is also different. Yes, we have white gold hands and indices and black lacquer. That's the same, but the Kermit used a some call it a maxi dial, something that originally reached production in 1992 with the Yachtmaster. It entails the use of larger plots of loom on white gold bases. So sometimes people will try to make one of these watches, they'll buy the bezel and attach it, but you can see that the dial doesn't match because on a non-factory LV, you will have smaller plots on the dial. The dial, by the way, is in excellent condition. 300 meters water resistant, the watch features a quick set date and hacking seconds, and the manufacturer movement inside this very straight and intact original case is the caliber 3135 bi-directional automatic winding jeweled staff with teflon coated reversing wheels for utmost smoothness it features a 48 hour power reserve it beats weigh at eight beats per second and it pivots on its 31 joules with a full balance bridge and a free spring index, two features that endow the watch with great shock resistance. It uses an overcoil hairspring and five position adjustment to keep excellent time in any position, including through the five standard positions of the Swiss COSC chronometer certification. This watch is a COSC chronometer. The timepiece is handsome and adept in any situation. 
formal or casual, male or female wrists. If you have a taste for the past and the present in one reference, this is a great way to go. A timepiece that offers everything you could want in a 40 millimeter package, including future projectability and collectability. I don't call many Rolex watches as investment pieces for the future. This is an exception. Email tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.